wanted to quickly mention this um, regarding the current conversation going around um, regarding Travis Scott's album Utopia. I think some people are still coming to grips with how underwhelming it is and how basically mid it is and how it probably didn't live up to expectation. And I think one of the best takes, um, you know, that kind of back up some things I was speaking about with my little review that I mentioned in a previous podcast is this person on Twitter who had a very, who'd kind of put it in much better ways than I could have put it. So this person's called Evan ridley ridley whiskey right ridley whiskey and this person is a writer contributor for pitchfork and also has worked at places like radio milwaukee wmsc shepherd's express and all the other places so a journalist that kind of knows what they're talking about and i feel they put you know the whole you know feeling and the 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 kind of vibe around travis scott's album in a really good way so they said the following the new travis scott sounds amazing it's exquisitely um, curated as ever, but the vacuous emptiness at its core, where a real person should be, is now so glaring, it's almost unnerving. He creates these massive, expansive canvases and uses them to express literally nothing. <laughs> it's honestly eerie how scott manages to avoid conveying any actual thoughts opinions insights or even really basic humanity there's no worldwide view in the scott verse no perspective or lived experience every verse is an empty stream of predictive text scott has three defining qualities one he's a great he's, he's his great ear two his complete lack of personality and three i'm sorry but this is running theme his chilling disregard for his fan safety and there are moments when these qualities play off each other in a very uncanny and unsettling ways scott never addresses the astral world tragedy on the album because he never addresses anything but suggestions of a crowd crush are all over this song anyway it just does it just do, i just don't think he cares or even really thinks about it much at all just callous emptiness and of course, they've got the intro here to the song featuring Tezo Touchdown, where he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Turn it up to the maker, vibrator, roof shaker, of Quaker, annihilator. Verse one, baby, please get off the gram. I like you better in the stands. I upgrade my only fan. It do, I don't need a cam. This right here, my new modern jam. I'm on fire, the new burning man. <laughs> anyway whenever the internet debates the possibility of an ai pop star i always think we already have one basically travis scott same mercenary focus on music as a pleasure center code sequence with no moral or human center to distract from that pursuit yo this is brutal but so true and i think i mentioned it in my review how his ability to be extremely safe but I think in, in this sense, it's basically devoid of a personality. It has been his strength. That's why he's been, you know, before the Astro World tragedy, you know, Travis Scott was probably one of the most brand friendly rappers out there. He doesn't really get in any drama. Um, no baby mother, no baby mother stuff, no gang stuff, no fight stuff. Like he's pretty, you know, pre below the radar kind of thing so it kind of allows him to marry up with brands like mcdonald's and whatnot and there'd be no real issue was if they kind of married up with somebody else there'll be all these things that come out of the woodwork and it'll go a bit crazy but unfortunately over the years it seems like that emptiness that he has of his lack of personality is now hampering him at a stage of his career where he should be saying something and it's not that i think somebody left me a comment saying that oh not every not every piece of music has to have a message behind it no one's saying message if you see what this person spoke about evan i think they put it really well it's not even about a message it's more so just about all of these words here right it's honestly eerie how scott manages to avoid conveying any actual thoughts opinions insights or even real basic humanity there's no worldview in travis scott's verse and that's very true it's not even the fact that he doesn't have anything to say it's that there's just nothing there at all like we don't know his perspective on anything we know he likes bad bitches we know he likes take you know catching flights and stuff and raging but do we even know what he likes to drink do we even know what drugs he likes do we know what food he's like i don't know zero we don't know jack shit about the guy all we hear is him kind of moaning and groaning on these amazingly produced flipping records which legitimately sound very um movie like right they sound like a soundtrack that's what they actually sound like but unfortunately 
the rest of it just just nothing else there to really kind of grab you and that's basically where he's at as an artist and maybe this explains why there's these pictures going around of travis allegedly back in the studio again i think deep down if he is an artist um, which i still believe he is even though you know the, the 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 output isn't the greatest i'm pretty sure he knows deep down that he probably didn't um come with you know the, the work that he probably should have in terms of this album that's why he's probably going back straight to the lab to try and rustle some new thing up again but i just feel like overall it's just a shame because what it it's a shame but it's also a good thing because i think what it does do it does make us appreciate the likes of the tyler the creators the likes of the asap rocky no he's Rocky, sorry the likes of the kanye west and maybe a few other people who actually do try and even Playboy Car is a good example. They try to present something new. They come with a new sound. They come with a new aesthetic. They try and change and mix things up and actually take a risk. Because what you hear with this Travis Scott Utopia album is stuff that you could have probably heard in days gone by, you know, in other albums, right? Days before Rodian, all this sort of stuff. It kind of sounds like an extension of that sort of stuff. Like maybe an evolution or a sharpening or whatever it may be. But it's not really going anywhere. So it's interesting to see other people also kind of feeling the same and i think the travis fanboys are trying their best to kind of you know rewrite the narrative but i think even them can you know even most of those guys can you know agree that the album probably doesn't live up to even to their lofty expectations and i think that is more than fair to kind of say but then there was a really interesting review that i saw actually on pitchfork that i want to read because i feel like the score was very accurate even though people on social media are going crazy over it so this is courtesy of pitchfork and again pitchfork for reviews you have to take with a bit pinch of salt but i thought this number was fairly accurate in terms of describing or kind of you know reviewing or summarizing the kind of you know what level the kind of music is at and this reviewer gave travis scott's utopia 5.7 and they said the following right and i'm going to read it to you now what this review says because i thought it was fairly on point and kind of put into words what i've been thinking regarding travis scott and his album in general so it said the following in circus maximus the 75 minute documentary brain poem that accompanies travis scott's utopia our hero travis gets into a scuffle with a tentacle creature and head bangs into an open field he then climbs a mountain to seek an audience in an open f in seek an audience with rick rubin to confess a deep-seated sphere that he has been gnawing at his soul do i still have an ability to rage this is travis scott's idea of getting vulnerable <laughs> honestly i didn't I, we haven't seen this movie yet but they've seen it already but he's got this movie that i think he made in collaboration with was it spike jones who is it with i forgot who it was with it's made with somebody in collaboration right really esteemed director and the thing that he did was get rick rubin involved who is a fucking satire trope to pull out rick rubin to get introspective and shit right the fucking world champion of grifters right fucking rick rubin and now the the question that's kind of been gnawing away at his soul is does he have the ability to still rage that's the thing that's keeping him up at night i think it's hilarious because for the most part for the most part it's good to see right because what it does do is that it does kind of agree with our initial thoughts you remember when the astro world tragedy happened right when the astro tragedy happened right we all kind of saw the apology that travis scott did where he was kind of rubbing his face and trying his best to look like he was sad but he didn't really give a fuck and we all immediately felt it right we could all immediately tell this guy wasn't being sincere he really didn't give a fuck what happened to those kids at his festival he didn't really give a shit that they died it kind of is what it is in his head and he just wanted to move on get back to doing music and i think the rumors at the time was that he actually went to do the show the next day but obviously that got you know cancelled and whatnot and I think we saw it. We can kind, of, we kind of, we kind of felt it. So I think it's fairly evident. It's fairly interesting to see that all those kind of feelings that we had, those gut instincts that we had, are now being proven to be true. Because clearly, Travis is like maybe on the spectrum. I'm not too sure, or just one of those guys is just you know, like doesn't really feel much outside of the outside of the music when it's in the studio. So anyway, let's do the following. It continues. This is Travis' idea of getting vulnerable since he releases in is his inescapable album <laughs> i love all the i love how snidey pitchfork writers are every line is very snidey very snarky everything is fucking amazing 
Since he released his inescapable album Astro World five years ago, Travis has fully embraced this persona as the ultimate hooligan, even after tragedy put that character under fire. In 2021, while he performed one of his raucous sets at his hometown Astro World Festival in Houston, 10 people were killed and thousands more were injured during the sudden crowd crash crowd crush sorry while travis remains defend def, uh, while, Tra while travis remains a defendant in several civil suits he was not held criminally responsible for the incident and has seemingly moved on or pretended it never happened <laughs> spoiler alert he still does have the ability to rage and to get that across here in utopia a big empty rap blockbuster that lives in the shadows of other big less empty rap blockbusters specifically those by kanye west that probably won't be a surprise to anyone who's ever heard any songs by Travis Scott, who's been a yay disciple since the get, since the days of getting some production credits on users a decade ago. But Utopia veers from the heavy inspiration into Travis pretty much trying to single white female him. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this review. Well, that's impossible because even with the moody auto-tune warbling of 808 heartbreaks the grand maestro vibes of Be my beautiful dark twisted fantasy the icy electro synths of jesus and the famous friend appalooza of the life of pablo travis is missing arguably the most important aspect of kanye even at his most wild most narcissistic most famous kanye still felt shit right still felt shit raw no matter how much he tinkered layered or absorbed unafraid to look like a fool or at least convinced that he was so cool that it didn't matter if he did in the circus maximus film the visuals are at times so pristine and polished that travis looks like a cyborg utopia does sound a lot like that too see that guy said as well that travis feels like an ai and this guy's basically saying travis comes across like a robot in the movie fucking hell sometimes the man the marquee features and shiny productions are good at masking the fact that travis is an emotional black hole on the mic the dis the digital sorry the digitized lilts of a blonde inspired fogginess of my eyes sound nice enough especially when sprinkled with dreamy riffing from Samfer and justin vernon the rage beat on Fiend is played out, but Playboy Carter's new vocal trick sounded like he has bronchitis, sucks up the attention, <laughs> and just feels like Travis does a bunch of ad libbing. That's unfair, though. I think that Trav, I think that flipping um, what's he called? I think that Playboy Carter verse on Fiend's amazing. Hearing his deep voice is pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of um that clip that's going viral a little bit of that gay guy who says he's a crip. And he's trying to put on his like fuck voice, but it's just his voice, but just a little bit with a little bit of bass in it. It kind of reminds me of that sort of thing. Or like when sometimes, you know, you see trans people on the street, like get into an argument with somebody and they'll have their femme voice and somebody will say something shit. And they'll be like, you know, they'll get into their deep voice. That's what it kind of felt like. So big up Playboy Carty for doing that. Future is a strong over the orchestral beat of um, telekinesis, and I like when he raps counting so much money till my skin peel. Sizzle is here too, sounding good and sounding like she's collecting a check. <laughs> but again, at his peak, Kanye was able to draw shop, sh uh, show stopping features out of collaborators. Um, these are nothing more than a fleeting thrills. Travis needs these knockout guest appearances because nobody expects him to carry an album by himself. The bar for him as a rapper is already low he's here for the vibes not the skill yeah do you guys remember travis scott's um double xl people shouldn't be surprised at him saying nothing was it double xl that he's, he remember he had a freestyle when he did double xl he's wearing like this like um jumper it's like turtleneck jumper he's got like the jumper thing over his face and it's got, it's got like all holes on it and shit and he's just like i don't know what he's saying he's just rambling some shit that that should have given us an indication of what Travis's uh rapping ability is like. I'm pretty sure he's a double XL rapper, r um, cipher and shit. He's just horrible. It's not, it's not even horrible. It's just there's nothing there. You know what I mean? He's just it's just all vibes. But obviously he's skating on the beat. But it's just nothing is being said actually. And I think now unfortunately we're living in the era where people do want you to say something, even if it's toxic, even if it's destructive, even if it's harmful. Give us something, you know. <laughs> it continues. But it doesn't sound like he's leveled up because his life is so different now than when he tries to act like it's not. He comes off as a fake as hell. His romantic breakups and his reconciliations have been endless tabloid fodder. His future as a back 
bankable mainstream act seemed uncertain after the Travis the Astro World Sorry disaster. That's not asking him to suddenly be a lyricist, but one of the basic attributes we expect um, from rappers is to be real with us, or at least convince us that they're not purely bullshitting. Mild edginess, like I got yay over Biden on schizo or blank mosh pit ready tracks such as topia to pia so to pia twins just come off as deflections it's a it's scared rapping hiding behind the flipping spectacle raw this rapper's calling travis scott scary imagine that this writer's calling travis scott scary it continues even more so than his past projects utopia has a rapid beat switch ups stack credits and cinematic songs for no other reason than he thinks that is what signals an event album modern jam features some embarrassingly uninspired stripped down rapping by travis <laughs> but oh the mildly funky beat is co-produced by guy manuel the homin crystal of the, the of daft punk meltdown is diet sicko mode oh don't say that i love meltdown i thought drake's verse was fucking bad boy um but oh man drake this pharrell new office job okay it was kind of funny on delestro's echoes the shimmering and buffering noise gets topped with beyonce's wails never mind that she's going through the motions like robert downing jr gets appearance in minor marvel movies this beyonce feature is about as deep as it nods to its houston roots uh, and still it's beyonce rap is just it's such a regional culture even for the megastars whether it's drake or toronto drake with toronto or kendrick with la or a little bit with atlanta the connection to their home grounds um grounds them as they become international superstars travis still had that of the astro world where the chopped and screwed big hawk sample of sicko mode or the homage to the rip rip screw went along and making him feel like a real person utopia is a global ambition sacrifice that little bit of realness he had left i'm not really sure about that point so it's not even surprising that k-pop exists a diabolically stupid plan to create the most popular song in the world you have travis the weekend and bad bunny fusing their crones together over a sourceless afro pop rhythm on a track where the title supposedly isn't a reference to the korean pop genre or to the game pop genre to game extra clicks but has the same effect that's a good point actually. i didn't think about that why is it called k-pop when it isn't a k-pop song it's actually an afro beat song an afro pop song huh the algorithm will love it congrats on one on the hit song surprise he didn't round out the chart chasing by hit by hitting up morgan wallen yeah that would have been fucking gross isn't it if you had a morgan wallen song to end it but to be fair though k-pop i didn't like as a single but in sequence of the album it does sound pretty good um it didn't sound good on its own i thought it sounded trash but in sequence when you listen to the whole album it does sound actually pretty decent for all this blinding star power, every moment on Utopia should feel seismic or at the very least impactful. Think of Quaver's melodic fantasia on All My This Side or Nav's ice cold breeziness on Beebs in a Trap or even Drake's Sicker Mode, verses which basically implanted into your brain permanently after one listen. Now, without those, all he has to back himself up is production. Even that is so safe. He waters down the cutting edge sounds of the past and in the process flattens his southernness to the point where he feels like he's from nowhere. Ooh hoo hoo. God, this this review is scathing. The Tra to Travis's credit, rap needs blockbusters too. Many of the genre's great albums of the year are completely absorbed in regional movements and they aren't even cutting through the noise. See Sexy Red's Hood Hottest Prince, see Sexy Red's Hood Hottest Princess and V's Gang Ganger. Um, but it also would be nice to have a watercolor moment. Sorry, what am I, why can't I speak today? But it also would be nice to have a watercolor mo monocultural event a conversation piece that you can talk about with anyone everywhere we need those albums that end all the widespread fear mongering that rap is a downward spiral just because they're struggling to get a number one hit this year rap albums that become so ubiquitous in pop culture that when you look back at the moment in life it will be inextricable there are fewer moments like this than in art in general anymore but to get there the hollow spectacle of utopia is not enough you want something to grab onto beyond that an idea a feeling honesty you want music with a vision that can make you feel like your world or the world is different even for a moment man this is a fucking scathing review pretty brutal to be fair 
if I'm in Travis' team, I don't want him to read this because this might hurt your feelings. But I agree with a lot of what this guy said. I can't deny it. I do agree with a lot of it. I think there were some snarky bits that probably did need to be included in there. But I think overall, um, it does... It, it is a good thing because what it does do, it does say that we all hold Travis up on a high pedestal. We know he's, you know, we know he can do much better than this. And we were all kind of collectively disappointed, you know, in culture because we all were waiting for this album to maybe turn up on, you know, during summer and shit, have it banging in the background during barbecue season and shit. But unfortunately, it's not really an album that people are going to be playing back to front anytime soon. Maybe there's a bunch of tracks you can play in a gym. Like I'm thinking now to put in a gym playlist, maybe, you know, a good sort of like mix of tunes, maybe Meltdown, yeah, maybe Sirens, Meltdown and Fiend, those are some pretty good tunes back to back to put in the flipping playlist if you're going to go to gym and shit, and maybe even the first, yeah, maybe you go for the first 10, I'd go maybe first 10 records you could probably get through with putting those in the flipping playlist but the rest of it isn't that great so i do really agree with this writer big up alfonso was it alfonzi pierre for putting this review together very well done um snarky bits aside which you know is probably part of course when it comes to writing reviews for pitchfork i feel like he really did um surmise some of my feelings um in a really eloquent way and kind of was brutally honest in terms of you know where travis is in his current position going forward and some of the character flaws that we've seen in him in recent years. So that was great to see from him. Big up him. What people are saying here in the chat, T. Scott is a bad person, but these critics are just being haters on the music. Yeah, but I think it's good to be haters on the music. I think we do need more of that. We do need some, we, need, we, we do need more criticism in that way. We do need more flipping, um, we do need it, to be honest. Art is a bit, you know, it's a bit weird in that respect. We kind of do need it, to be 